Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Tables can have many purposes in Word. You can use tables to manipulate data like a spreadsheet program. You can use them to store data, or you can use them to assist you in structuring the layout of content within a document. While many people often think of cells within a table as only recording text and numbers, you can place any content that you want into cells, such as pictures. You can edit individual cells or create and delete entire columns and rows of cells. However, before we look at manipulating tables, we need to look at how to create a table in Word. In this lesson, you will begin by examining how to create a basic structured table layout. These types of tables, which resemble grids, have a consistent structure and are often used for data storage. After creating structured tables, we will then look at creating tables that have an irregular cell structure. These types of tables are often used for assisting in document layout. For example, if you wanted to create a coupon cutout for people to use, you could place the coupon information into cells within a table to enhance the appearance of the final printed document. To create a basic table in Word, click the Table button in the Tables button group on the Insert tab in the ribbon to display a drop-down menu. To create a structured table, roll your mouse pointer out and over the grid shown in the drop-down menu by the number of columns and rows that you want to insert into the table. The dimensions of the table will be shown above the grid as a number of columns by the number of rows when you roll your mouse pointer over the grid. Click your mouse when you have the desired number of columns and rows highlighted in order to insert a table of the displayed dimensions into your document. After creating the table, you will probably want to perform data entry. Moving into cells to enter information is easy. Either click into the cells within which you want to enter information, or press the Tab key on your keyboard to move from cell to cell, from left to right, and top to bottom. Keep in mind that if you press the Tab button while you are in the last cell of the table, which is the lower right corner cell, Word will insert a new row for you at the bottom of the table so that you may continue data entry. Cells also contain multiple lines of text if needed. Entering text into a cell works in the same way as when entering text into a document. When the text reaches the cell's border, it automatically wraps down to the next line within a cell. You only need to press Enter on your keyboard if you want to create a new paragraph within a cell. Another way to create a structured table is to click the Table button in the Tables button group on the Insert tab of the ribbon and then select the Insert Table command. This opens the Insert Table dialog box. In this dialog box, enter the number of columns and the number of rows that you want the table to possess into the two boxes provided in the Table Size section. In the Auto Fit Behavior section, you can set how Word determines what size to make the columns in the table. You can select Fixed Column Width if you want the columns to be a set size. You can then use the Spinner box to set the width yourself. You can select the Auto Fit to Contents option to let Word adjust the width of the columns based on the content that is placed into them. You can select the Auto Fit to Window button to let Word adjust the column to fit the window width. Then click the OK button to insert a table of the specified dimensions into your document. Now we will look at creating a table by drawing the individual cells by hand. While it is possible to use this method to create an organized, structured table, it is more often used to create a layout for your document. It is also used to make minor adjustments to a structured table. To use this method, click the Table button in the Tables group on the Insert tab of the ribbon, and then select the Draw Table command. When you select this command, your mouse pointer turns into a pencil icon when you hold it over the document area. At that point, click and drag to draw the table cells that you want. You can also click and drag within a cell from one to another in order to split the cell into additional columns and rows of cells.
Note that this tool remains enabled after you finish drawing the table cells. To turn this feature off, click the Table button in the Tables group on the Insert tab, and then select the Draw Table command again. You can also press the Escape key on your keyboard. Notice that when you initially select the Draw Table command and then start drawing table cells, you will see a new Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This is the Table Tools Contextual tab. This tab contains two other tabs, the Design tab and the Layout tab. On the Design tab, you can use the buttons found within the Borders button group, which is called Draw Borders in Word 2010 through 2007, to change the line style, line thickness, and line color of the lines that you draw using the Draw Table button. You can use the Line Style drop-down to select a different style of line to apply. Likewise, you can use the Line Weight drop-down to select a thickness of line to draw. You can use the Pen Color drop-down to select the line color. Then you can use the Draw Table button to draw lines that match the settings you selected. You can also click and drag over the lines that you have already drawn in a table to redraw the lines using the new formatting. When you are learning to draw table cells, you will inevitably make a few errant lines. You can erase these mistakes by using the Eraser button. In Word 2013, this button appears in the Draw button group on the Layout tab. In Word 2010 and 2007, this button appears in the Draw Borders button group on the Design tab of the Table Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon. When you click this button, your mouse pointer will turn into an eraser when you hold it over the document. Place it over the line that you want to remove, and then click and drag the mouse over the line that you want to erase. This can be a bit tricky at first. The line that you will delete should appear highlighted before you release the mouse button. This button, like the Draw Table button, will, will remain enabled until you turn it off. You can do this by clicking the Eraser button once again or by pressing the Escape key on your keyboard. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.